Well, good evening, everybody. How's everybody doing? This is the Tuesday, and this is uh, the first Tuesday of a new year, and we are live tonight. Hi, Chave, come on in. Wow, I'm so excited. One, I'm excited because it's a new year, you guys. We made it, and uh, we could probably think of a bunch of people, a lot of people, loved ones, family, everybody that didn't make it to see this year, so here we are, you guys. We made it, and I'm so excited. I'm so excited for all the possibilities in front of me, all the possibilities that you guys have been sharing with me uh, that's happening in your life. It's just an exciting time, right? And so over the, the break, I've been getting all this information, all this positive stuff that's happening in your lives, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. I'm excited for you, and um, God is moving, God, but God is moving. God has always been moving, but, but God has, you know, he's been moving, but here we are doing the doggone thing, and I'm excited for you for so many things that have come about, businesses and, and, and books and, and jobs and going back to school and all kind of stuff is happening. So I'm excited for you guys, grateful for that. Um, new beginnings are taking place. Amen. And that's so wonderful to see. So wonderful to witness. And thank you guys for sharing that with me. Hey, Roz, I see you, girl. I love you. Um, I'm excited for you guys. I'm so excited for you guys because when you put in the work, you can have all the faith in the world. Listen to me. But if you don't put in the work, nothing is going to happen in your life. And some of you are putting in the work. So I have to tell you, I just completed my first round of mentorship. It was amazing. I had 28 amazing women in mentorship and, um, and it was powerful. It was so powerful. Most of the people completed. I would say that probably 25 of 28 uh, completed. And that was a good thing. That was really a good thing. But the most exciting thing is most of them have come back and I have a second group going into mentorship. And so I also have men. The men came to me and the men started asking me about this mentorship thing. How can we be down? How can we get in? What's up? So I opened it up to the men. I had to change the name from Lady of Legacy to Legacy Builders because that's what we are. But I'm excited that the fellas are getting on board and you're not letting that mental roadblock of all oh, female male thing get in your way, but you just want what God has for you. And I believe anybody can give it to you. So mentorship is taking off. Listen, also, if you haven't gotten your tickets for January 25th, ladies, get your tickets for a lady and her bags. Let's talk about it. There's some great things coming down the pipe. I think we have about 40 tickets left, probably 35 after yesterday. If you don't have your tickets, go to NatalieKOwens.com. Get your tickets for a lady and her bags. I want to see you there. We're going to have a good time, all right? But come prepared to do the work. Amen. So listen, thank you guys for joining me tonight. You could be anywhere, you know, just mostly probably on your couch watching TV under a good blanket with a good cup of coffee. That's where I would be if I weren't doing this. But I thank you guys for joining me tonight. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. And I do have some things that I want to share with you. So tonight I want to talk about tonight. Uh, the theme for tonight is now is your time. Right now is your time. Not next week, not later on, not in the summertime, you know, not, not in December when it comes back again, you know, not when the kids grow up, not when the kids go back to school, not when you get your divorce, not when you get married, not when you finish school. Right now is your time. So whatever it is that you got in your heart and in your mind to do, get it out. I talked to someone last night about 10 o'clock last night and I was telling them, they were telling me all their ideas and all this stuff. I said, listen, we need to meet. That's what I do as a coach. We need to meet. Let's get it out of your head. Let's get it out of your heart. Let's put it on paper and let's make it happen. It's good to talk about it, but come on, we got to start walking about it. And so she was excited. I was excited. And so it, things that it, it, it can happen if you want it to happen. But right now is your time. You got to stop thinking about it and you got to stop hesitating and you got to just make it happen. You got to step out on it. You got to just go for it. Whatever is in your heart to do, whatever God has put in your heart to do, whatever it is that keeps you up at night and you know you should be doing that business, you, you know you should be writing that book, Lord have mercy, get it done. Listen to me, get it done, get it done. I can say write that book now because I finished my book. 
but get it done. Listen, whatever it is in your heart to do, get it done. And what you got to do is, hi, Tina, good to see you. What you got to do is get with some people that can help you bring that thing to pass. See, what we do is we have great ideas and we have these great dreams, but we're in the wrong circles. Hi, Veretta. Hi, Veretta. Good to see you. We're in the wrong circles. We're not in circles with people. Come on here. We're not in circles with dreamers. And so you got to get in a circle with dreamers. When you get an idea, you get something in your heart, something in your spirit, get in a group of dreamers, get in the group, get with a group of people that you can share it with. And that's going to challenge you to bring that thing to pass. You got to get among the right people. We get these great ideas and we stay close to the people that we're comfortable with. We stay, we stay close to people that we have sentimental values with. And the only thing with that is we know they're going to be there because we love them. They're going to be there because you love them. But when it comes time to share your dream and when it comes time to make a big move, sometimes the people closest to you are not the people to help you bring that about because they can only see you like they see you and like they've seen you before. They don't see you as an entrepreneur. They don't see you as a business owner. They don't see you at a next level. They see us all right here together doing the same thing all the time, loving on each other, having a good time, spending our money, not saving our money, and we just floating through life. But they don't see you at your next level. They don't see you in a greater place. They don't see you, they don't see you big. They see you medium. They only see you average. And so you got this dream, you got this great idea, you're just in the wrong circle. You need to get among some dreamers. Listen to me, some visionaries, people that have vision, people that can see what can't be seen. Some people that defy reality who say, you know what, this is what reality says, but by faith, let's take this thing to the next level. People that defy the odds, you know what, I'm not qualified to do any of this, but watch me work. You understand me? Watch me work. Watch me do what God told me to do. And according to the qualifications and the standards of the world, you don't fit any of that. So you need to get in a group of people who defy natural odds. You need to get among some people who defy the, the natural requirements of what success is. Because everything about you doesn't look like success. Where you came from does not look like success. You don't have a degree on the wall that says you did this to be successful. So you need to get among some people who can dream big and then make some things happen, who bring the dreams about after we, we wake up, right? Now is the time. And I'm so excited for that. Now is the time. And we need to be making some things happen. Right. And so some people have come to me and said, well, everybody is not excited like that about life. Well, you shouldn't be listening to me because I'm excited like that about life. I don't want to talk to the downtrodden. I don't want to talk to the people that's caught up in their problems. I don't want to talk to the people that are rehearsing the same old stuff over and over again. At what point do we get beyond what happened to us and start walking in what, what we are and who we really are? At what point do I stop being the victim to life? And I take life by the horns and I start controlling life rather than life controlling me. That's it, Charnette. I see it. Eagles. We are eagles. We are not chickens. And see, what we do is chickens flock. When you see chickens, chickens are always together. Always a bunch of chickens with their heads down and eating off the ground. We're not chickens. We're eagles. And when you see eagles, you don't see eagles like you see ducks or sparrows or crows or pigeons. Eagles don't flock. And that means eagles don't, eagles don't run in packs. Eagles soar. Eagles, eagles soar. They take flight. They go above everything. Come on here. Because they, ha they have vision. They need to be able to see. And when you're among the group, among the crowd, come on here. People are telling you now's not the right time. You know what? You need to wait till your kids are grown. You know what? You need to wait till you. You know what? You need to wait on the Lord. You know what? You need to wait. How do you know I need to wait on the Lord? How do you know I need to wait on the Lord? How do you know I need to wait on the Lord? Did the Lord tell you I need to wait on him? Because the Bible says you shall have whatever you say. The Bible says you shall have whatever you say for those lazy people that are sitting back saying, girl, wait on the Lord. No, the Lord said you are already blessed. Go get it. Now is the time. 
I'm not waiting for anybody. I'm not waiting to be accepted. I'm not waiting to be understood. I'm not waiting for people to applaud. I'm not waiting for people to, to tell me a, a go time. I'm not waiting for this. I'm not waiting for this. I'm not waiting for this. It's just time to go. So let me ask you these three questions. What is it that you want from your life? So some of us are saying, yeah, I want, I want wealth and I want money. Money is not it. And if you want wealth, you don't want riches. It's the difference between wealth and riches. If you want wealth, wealth starts from the inside. It doesn't start with money. You understand what I'm saying? So wealth starts from the inside of you. Wealth starts from building who you are. Wealth starts from your connection with something bigger than you, something higher than you, right? Wealth starts on the inside of you because it changes your mindset. It changes your belief system. It changes your values. It changes your standard. It, it, it shakes the way that you live. It, wealth teaches you to live legacy in order to, to, to teach legacy. Wealth teaches you to build you up so that you can build those up around you. I don't want riches. I want wealth. Because wealth is a mindset, understand me. And everybody can't get there. So what is it that you want from your life? What is it that you want from your life? What's your, what is your plan? And if you have a plan, how do you plan to execute it? Many of us have written down our goals for the new year. What's the plan of execution for your goals? Okay, you wrote your goals down. You know what you want for your life. Okay, what's the plan to get there? How do you plan to accomplish these goals? How will you execute those goals? So we write the goals down, but I don't have a plan of action to get those goals executed, to make those goals come about. How will you execute your goals? Because everybody desires to be something, but every, not everybody is willing to do what it takes to get there. Everybody desires to have enough money, but not everybody is willing to do what it takes to get there. This is bigger than, than having enough money you understand what I'm saying? Somebody said the more money you have or the wealthier you are, the more choices you have, the more options you have. I just want more options. I just want more options. What is it that you want to do? How do you plan to execute those goals, to get, to those, to get those goals accomplished? What does your execution look like? So let me ask you this. Here we are in a new year, and this is not a new year, a new you. And I remember in my ignorance, I thought that. But this is not about being a new me. Come on here. This is, it's, it's not about that. We are in a new year, but let me ask you this. What will you do differently in this new year that you didn't do last year? What, what is it that you will do different? It's not about you being a new year and being a new you, but it's about me changing my process. You don't need to be a new you. You need a new process. You need, you need a new way of thinking. You need a new method. You need a new program. You need a new system. You need to change your standards. You need to shift your values, right? You need to re you need to reevaluate your worth to yourself. How much am I worth to me? What does my value say about me? So you don't need to be a new you. You just need to reevaluate some things in your life. Few things that you need to reevaluate in your life. Evaluate your plan. Before before you evaluate your plan, let's go back. Before, before you evaluate that, let's look at this. First, evaluate your value. What am I worth to me? Because depending on what my worth is to me, what my value is to me, listen to me, is what I, my plan will be. It's how I'll construct my plan. So how do, how do you, some, there are some things that the, the process needs to change. The first thing is, what, am, what is my value to me? What is my worth to me? And based on what my work is, what do my goals look like? And then based on what my goals look like, what kind of plan do I have in place to accomplish my goals? You need to change your process. It's not about being a new you. It's, a, it's about changing the way you do things. You understand me? So last year we had a lot of, you know, we stumbled and failed. And we got back up and we kept going and we kept going, doing this and doing that. But if I don't value me in the very beginning, nothing's going to work. So what am I worth to me? Because we can start and we don't finish and we don't finish because we, we lose value in ourselves. I don't think I'm worth it. And then we get distracted. So the first thing is, what am I worth to me? What does my value look like for me? And the second thing is, what, is my what are my goals based on my values? And then the third thing is, what is my plan based on my goals based on my value? And then how will I execute this plan based on my goals based on my values? 
Change your process. You need a new way. Come on here. You don't need a new you. You need a new way. You need a new way. You need a new system. You need a new circle. You need a new guide. You need a new instructor. You need, you need, you need something new. The process needs to change because the old process, if it didn't get you, some people in mentorship said, well, I didn't reach my goal because you didn't finish the process. And it has nothing to do with me because two things I told them. It's integrity on your part and it's accountability on mine. I'm going to be accountable, but can you have integrity to complete your goal? And some people didn't, to be honest. Because what we do is we lose value. Our value starts to decline and we start to quit on ourselves. And so that's why we start and stop. So it's not about a new year, a new me, and, you know, I'm, I got these great things going. That's not what it is. You need to change your process. You need a new process based on your value based on your goals, based on your plan, and then based on your execution. And if you keep your work, your value at the top of the list, I'm always worth it. You understand what I'm saying? I'm always worth it. I'm always worth it. I'm always worth it. That's what, that, that's what makes me get out to go exercise. I'm worth it. I'm worth it. I'm worth it. And you got to tell yourself that who comes to tell you, who tells you that in a day? Nobody. So sometimes you got to look in the mirror and you got to say, I'm worth it. You got to look in the mirror and you got to tell yourself, I'm worth it. I don't care what they think about me at work. I don't care what my family said about me. I don't care what my sister thinks. I don't care what my cousin said. I don't care that my father wasn't there. I'm worth it. And I'm worth everything that God has for me. And guess what? You got to go get it. So you got to change your process, change the format, shift the trajectory of your life. You got to do some things different in order to get some things different. You understand me? I was talking to my son today and I told him the way that we change the actions of our lives is through diet and exercise. Diet and exercise for my health, diet and exercise for my thinking, diet and exercise for my spirituality, diet and exercise for my finances. You understand me? Diet and exercise for my relationships. Whatever your diet is, that's how you're going to perform. When you go to a trainer and nutrition, they, nutritionist and you say, well, I want to lose weight. And uh, some people want to do it and take pills. You, you can't do a quick fix. Some of us are looking at some people and we're going, I want what they have. And you can go buy the stuff that they have, but you can't get the stuff that they have unless you do diet and exercise. So that's what we do. Rather than put in the work to get to a certain place, we go match people with things. We go match people with stuff. And you can't buy the things to get the stuff. You can't do that. You can buy the things, but you don't get the stuff. It's through diet and exercise. So what you take in, listen to me, what you take in is how you will perform spiritually, financially, socially. You understand me? Mentally, it's how you'll perform. Whatever you're taking into your mind through entertainment, through reading, through social activity, come on here, through eating, whatever that you take in, whatever you listen to, how, whatever information you take in, however you take in that information, all of that information becomes a thought. And I shared this with you before, but I want to go a little deeper tonight because it's about, it's about your perception, it's perception, it is thought, it is habit, and then it is action. It is perception, which is information, thought, habit, and then my actions. So whatever information that I take in is what I think on. And what I think on is what my habits become because it's what's always in my mind. So I build my habits around what I take in. And if you got a bunch of negative friends or a bunch of friends that always complain or a bunch of friends that don't believe in living their dream or a bunch of friends that don't have any vision and that's what your circle looks like, you, you take that information in. That's what you think on. And then you create habits around that thought process. And then you get the actions that you have in your life. So there's a small scripture that says, as a man thinketh, in his heart, so shall he be, right? As he thinks in his heart, not as he thinks in his mind. And the scripture says, hide the word in your heart that you might not sin against God or hide the word in your heart that you might not, that you might get better results for your life. So this is the thing. Most of us have the experience of church. 
We take in the information from church, but when you don't take in the, the, the process of meditation, when you don't take in the information, you get the word, but because you don't have in meditation, you have thought. thought you, the, the information comes in. Your thought helps you to understand it, but after your thought, there needs to be meditation. So some of you might say, you know what, Natalie, I don't go to church. Read some, po so, some positive affirmation books. Go find you something positive, some self-help books. But if, you, if all you're doing is taking in, taking in information and you think on that and you build habits based on that, then you get those actions. If you don't, if you don't take in information that's greater than your thought, nothing in your life will change. So if you don't read the Bible and you don't go to church, that's what it is for me, the word of God. It's my life. It's not, it's, church is not the act for me. Church is extra. The word of God is my life, right? It's what I build my life on, how I raise my children. And so you, you take that information in, your mind understands it, understands the thought, it processes that. But then meditation, I have the scripture, and then meditation is the transfer of that thought from my mind to my heart. And now that I have the word of God in my heart, I establish, build my habits around what is in my heart. And now my habits dictate to my actions and my life says she has habits based on her meditation of the scripture that she has understood and that she has received. So I, you can, I can tell a person's diet by how they exercise their life. You can tell people who are just in it to get the money because they look the part. But when you have conversation with them, they're very shallow. There is no depth of life in them. There is no depth of value in them. There is no common standard that they live by. There's just, there's no, their life is up and down, up and in, in and out of relationships. There's no steadiness to it. What makes my marriage work is what I meditate on that creates the habit the lifestyle, the standard, amen, that causes my actions to be what they are as a wife. What helps me to be the mother that I am is the standard, the, 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 what I meditate on to be a good mother, to be a good person, to be able to pass this to my children. And I create habits around that standard. And those are the actions that you see. And then you get to see the production, the produce of my actions, my children. So it's all about diet and exercise. What are you eating? What are you eating socially? What are you eating mentally? What are you eating financially? What are you reading to teach you about your money? And when you're not reading information to help you save your money, you, you think money is just to be spent and you spend all of your money. You have all of the stuff, but you have no money saved because you don't take in any information to teach you to save your money. So you have nothing to meditate on, to think about your finances, to change your habits with money, to change your actions to saving. Relationships. Nobody's taught us to be married. We had to learn how to be married. We had to read something, get the information to know how to be married. Marriage does work, but you got to work on you for marriage to work. It's about diet and exercise. What you eat is what you will be. So remember when we were younger, we could grab a bag of Cheetos and a red soda and we, that, would, that would be it. Walking around with a red soda, you know, the flavor was red. Red soda and a bag of Cheetos. We could eat pizza every single day. We could eat burgers every single day. You can't do that now at 50. You can't just sit up and eat a whole pizza. You can't eat all, you can't eat all the cake you want to eat. Not, not at my age, you can't. Because it's about diet and exercise. Now you can eat it, but how will your body perform as a result of it? And some of us are suffering the results of our diets today. It's about diet and exercise mentally, spiritually. We take it in, but we have no meditation. So the thought of the word comes in, but it goes out as quick as it came in. Because I don't have the process of meditation to put it in my heart to live by it in order to create habits according to that, in order to have the actions in my life. And so what happens is when you don't have anything to shift, when your diet doesn't change, what you do is you continue to uh, uh, repeat your past experiences. 
Perception is hear, taste, touch, see, smell. And when you touch something, what you tell yourself is, it, oh, it feels like you associate it to a past experience. When you smell something, you associate it to a past experience. When you see something, you associate it to a past experience. When you hear something, you associate it to a past experience. And then I create my, my habits around my past experiences. And therefore, my actions today, if I don't bring in anything new and meditate on it to change my thought process, listen to me. My habits stay the same and my actions stay the same, same and my results stay the same. So what we do down the whole line of family is we don't, we don't get anything new. And when somebody dares to step out and go get something new to change the dynamics of the way the family thinks, we, get, we talk about them. So what we do is we, we repeat, the, we repeat what ha the experiences down through generations in our family to the point where we say dumb stuff. Well, that's how my family does things. That's what we do. That's who we are. And sometimes, guess what? It's not legacy. It's a generational curse. Because nobody ever thinks, this is how we are, but nobody ever thinks, how much higher could we be? How much greater could we be? Yeah, we're good people, but we, we're consumers. We don't own anything. We don't own anything. We're good people, but our families are broken. Where are our fathers in the house? And we'll look at that. Well, we're great people. I did it by myself. Yeah, I'm strong. But that's not, that wasn't the order. That wasn't the order of God. We just continue to repeat what we've seen. And as a result, that rather than trying to change and to get something new, so we get in the habit of coming to church, we get in the habit of going to things, and we hear new information, but guess what? We're not becoming new because I'm not meditating on it. I'm not using it. I'm not changing my habits. I'm not changing my habits, so therefore nothing, nothing is different. Nothing is different for me. So in order, to, in order to change some things, what will I do different? What is it that I want for my life? And when you don't change your diet, when you don't change your information, and you have nothing to meditate on, you just repeat the old experiences. So now my new year looks like my old year. My, my, new, year, my new year looks like my old, old year. And every year I get a year older, but nothing is really changing in my life. My new year looks like my old year. And nothing's really changing. Nothing's, nothing's really new for me. It just, it, I just keep repeating the same thing. Now is your time. So what is your plan? What does your process look like to change your life? Who's in your circle that can help you get to where you need to go? Who's in your circle? What's your plan? How do you, what, what do you want for your life? What's your plan? How do you plan to execute that plan? What does your circle look like? Who's actually on your team? Come on here, that can get you where you are. Not repeat what we've been doing, but get you to something better, to get you to something greater, to change the process of your thinking. Who's on your team? And you got to know who's on your team. Who's on your team that, you, that, can, that can help you to get there? Now is your time. Diet and exercise. Be mindful of what you take in. Be mindful of who you're talking to. Be mindful of who you associate with. Think about what you want for this whole new year. You got a whole year to make life whatever you want it to be. What will you choose for it to be? And it's totally up to you. It's totally up to you. What will you choose for it to be? It's totally up to you. Now is your time. Right now is your time. Get a plan, right? Know what you want for your life and execute. Get you a plan, know what you want for your life, and execute. Get you a plan, know what you want for your life, and execute. That's it. And now is the time to do it. No reason to wait, no reason to wait, no reason to deny yourself. Now is the time to do it.
Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you. Join me next Tuesday, every Tuesday night from 7 to 7.30. We will be live. I appreciate you guys uh, for watching, for sharing, um, and sharing with me your experiences through, this, through the end of the year. Listen, join me next week. If you hadn't, haven't gotten your tickets for January 25th, get your tickets, A Lady and Her Bags, NatalieKOwens.com. Appreciate you guys. I'll talk to you later. All right? Bye-bye.